It is the Tuttle Show here on Radio I.O. Hey there. Hey, what's going on? Is This is Drew, right? Hey, it's Drew, yeah. Hey, Drew, you're live on the air, man, and... Uh, I, I was explaining to people, I haven't talked too much about this, but uh, I was, um, it was the night, or it was the day of the Zombie 5K run from the Undead event that I was at. And uh, I was staying in downtown Atlanta and I was trying to get a cup of coffee. And I, I don't know what it is, but Starbucks, they're all closed in downtown Atlanta at 7 o'clock. Is, is that? I know, it's crazy. That's, it's, it's like they roll up the carpets and they go home. Yeah, and people think Atlanta is a big city. And you live in Atlanta, correct? I do. Okay. People think Atlanta is a big city, but the place closes down a lot at night. Like I notice on Sundays, I know it's a big church area, so people are going to church, but everything's closed on Sundays down there. Well, you know, we they finally did get a liquor law passed where people can go get liquor on Sundays. So so things are changing, especially around metro Atlanta. Um, so it's so, it's slow. We're, we're modernizing as, as you know, as we can do it. Yeah, as, so... As I was explaining to uh, my audience, uh, I was, uh, you know, I was walking from hotel to hotel. I, I went to the West End to see if I could go in that one. It wasn't there. Then I walked over to, uh, I, I got on, um, uh, what's the one that's connected to the Marriott where you guys were at? Anyways, I took well, the, yeah, I took the little bridge over right there. And, and I walk in and I'm like, I've been in here. And I'm used to seeing people dressed up in, in costumes and stuff, but not at this time of the year. And, and have I been sucked into a time warp because I thought I was at Dragon Con. I saw a guy dressed up as um, um, the, the evil black Spider-Man. What's his name? Uh, um, uh, uh, Venom? Yeah, Venom. Dressed up in, yeah. in Venom. And it was a costume all made out of cardboard. And then that I, was, I That was one of the box heroes. Those guys are terrific. Yeah, and, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, holy shit. There, there's a whole bunch of people dressed up here in, in costumes. <laughs> and then I'm like, this is great. This is awesome. I'm going to get pictures. I'm going to talk to people because I'm always thinking about stuff for the radio show. And then, so tell me about this. Uh, it, it's something called Cardboard Con, correct? That's right. That's right. Cardboard Con. This was, this was the third annual Cardboard Con this year that you happened to stumble upon. And, and it's kind of like a floating crap game or it has been so far. And, and we're kind of, I kind of like it at that size. Oh. We, how many people? How many people were there? Would you say forty, maybe? Yeah, forty, fifty. But it was awesome because everybody was so nice. Uh, when I was was there walking around talking with people, and then I met you, and then I met a couple of the um, uh, people from the media that were there covering the event. I, I they gave me their card. I forget. That um, was dubious. Uh, dubious. Uh, look, look for them on Facebook. They've got a website. So, so explain to my audience what cardboard con is. Like when, when, when I say you know it's costumes and stuff made out of cardboard, people are like, oh, th- these costumes can be great. But if you go to my Twitter feed, I got some pictures up, and I think one of the most brilliant, well done costumes of the whole night was the cardboard Boba Fett. Oh no! No, there were two cardboard Boba Fett's. One of them is one that that is painted. Uh, she showed up and she had hers painted. It was a it woman, almost like it was a real Boba Fett. Yeah. But then there's the one that's closer to my heart, and that's Box of Fett because um, <laughs> he's one of the original cardboard troopers. And I can tell you that whole story. But you know, we call him Box of Fett because he's got a fettuccine box on his arm for his rocket launcher. So. <laughs> So now, how did you come up with this idea? Because I, I've seen cardboard costumes before, but to do a whole event around it is brilliant. Well, what happened is, um, first of all, I've, I've worked in, in the motion picture industry since about 1991, and I love going to Dragon Con. Mm-hmm. And, um, it's gotten really, really big, though, too. <laughs> it's gotten huge. It, it has gotten so big. But uh, around 2003, I wrote a, a, a screenplay that was a romantic comedy set at a, at a convention, you know, at a sci-fi con. Mm-hmm. And in 2004, my friend Linda Burns entered us into the Southeastern Media Awards for the Atlanta Film Festival, and I was a finalist. I didn't win, but I was a finalist. And uh, so the next year, my friend Elliot, he was saying, you know, what are you going to dress up for Dragon Con? And I was like, I don't dress up for Dragon Con. He said, well, you wrote a screenplay. How can you not dress up? Your whole screenplay was about people doing costumes. And uh, I had a sketch of, that I'd drawn in a styrofoam cup of a guy in a, in a box costume mm-hmm. from my screenplay, and, and I said, well, if anything, I would do, I would dress up in cardboard because if anything fell off or if I spilled beer on it, I wouldn't be heartbroken. And I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. So that 
summer, uh, I put a thing on my website. It's like anybody who wants to meet, we'll get some boxes here at Dragon Con, put them on, and run around. And my friend Todd Sayer happened to be running across the lobby looking at some actress's boobs. And I, I got his attention. And he and I went and got boxes, put them on, ran around the convention. Our friend Tracy, uh, who works at HowStuffWorks.com, actually has a picture. If you look for costuming, mm-hmm. something like that on HowStuffWorks.com, you'll see us in those boxes. And so the next year, three, three of my friends wanted to do it. And so we all dressed as cardboard stormtroopers that year. And, and oh, they were great. Yeah, and, and Elliot wanted us to get in the parade. We were kind of nervous, but we went and did it. And we got some really, you know, kind of long looks from the real troopers because everybody was all over us. And so we had a great time that year, and we did it several years after that. We entered the Dawn competition. Uh, uh, Joseph Michael Lennister didn't really know what to make of us because we kind of yeah. – we kind of pranked his uh, his costume contest. Now, Drew, can I tell you? There, I mean, it's it's an art form to it. I mean, because you're you're starting from scratch, and yeah. like, how long does it usually take you guys? And and what's the average cost of some of your cardboard costumes? Uh, the cost is only tape, and and uh, how dirty you want to get going into a, into a pile of cardboard boxes together. But to be fair. There's an entire – the whole thing has branched because there are the box heroes, like the guy that you saw that was Venom. Mm-hmm. Um, the guy that was there in the, in the Captain America costume. There was a thing? Yeah, there was a thing. There, there, what else was there? There was Spider-Man. There was Silver Surfer, uh, Goblin, uh, the Green Goblin. All of those guys, my friend Stephen Larkworthy uh, has a, this CAD machine that he can output stuff on, and they've got this entire color palette, comic book color palette that they stick to. And so, you know, it's kind of like – the whole thing is branched. So my my branch is the you know you're you're six years old and making a costume out of boxes mm-hmm. that you find. Hey, so this is you uh, know that kind of thing. Okay, so the website if people want to check this out. Is this something you guys are going to do again next year? Yeah, but I don't. Everybody come. <laughs> you're the only convention that I know of. Don't come. You're not good at. Don't come. Don't come. <laughs> But no, it, now I got to tell you my story of the night, and and I made <laughs> God, and I I didn't tell you this because I knew you were busy and stuff, but I made a complete ass of myself um, there what that did night. You do? Oh what did God! You do? Well, it, it, not a complete ass. I felt really bad. Okay, so I I'm going to tell this story now. You had uh, your famous person there, uh, Candace Akala, was mm-hmm. was was in the event. I had no idea who she was. I I've heard of the show and stuff. So I I thought it was a funny costume she had, and and I wanted to take a picture of it. I start off by saying, "Hey, can I take a picture of your box?" And, <laughs> and I was like, I was like, and and then I was like, "Wow!" Um, and then and then I was like, "Man, that came out wrong. I'm so sorry." And she laughed it off and would thought it was really really cool. But then I had the picture. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be nice sort of try to make up for the box comment." I was like, "Hey, what's your, what's your Twitter handle?" I was thinking in my head. I was like, oh, "I'm I'm gonna get her some attention, you know, because I had no idea who she was." I was like, "I'm gonna impress her with my six thousand followers I have on Twitter." That's right. Yeah. So I go and I said, hey, what's your Twitter handle? I'm going to tweet the picture I just took of you. And, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to impress this chick with my 6,000 followers. So I type it in, goes to her profile. And I was like, wait a minute. How did you get verified? And she was like, oh, my publicist did it for me. And I said, well, your you're publicist? I was like, and I just brushed it off. I walked away after that and I started doing some research. I was like, holy shit. She has 245,000 followers on Twitter and she's hot and she's on a very popular tv show but get this she's from the town i'm from oh no way yeah she's from orlando Uh, her dad is still a surgeon in the orlando area and i just it was such a small small world that i ran into her i had no idea who she was but i mean she look i i i don't think i made that ass uh, ass of myself if you if you guys want to check her out on twitter it's at Candice, C-A-N-D-I-C-E, Akola, it's A-C-O-L-L-I, and uh, she is on the uh, TV show, The Vampire Diaries. I've heard of the show. I don't know who's on it, but, it, I mean, she was very, very nice. How the hell did you get somebody like her out to one of your events? Well, you know, everybody loves cardboard, but the, the, the I think the reason that she came is because the sponsor for this year's Cardboard Con was uh, Joe Sticky Stuff, okay. which is which is, you may have seen it at Restoration Hardware during Christmas time, and you can buy it in different places. Uh, my friend Joe, who I worked with in the film business for a long time, is the prop master on Vampire Diaries. 
Ah. And so he, since he was a sponsor, he, he stuck up a couple of little posters around the, the production office and, and probably over on the stages. And, you know, it's it's like a family when you're working on a TV show like that. So so Candace found out about it, and she's a really neat lady. She's You know, she's really just a real person, mm-hmm. as you found out. And and, uh, and she was cool enough to come play with us. And the, one of the funniest things that happened is during the parade, yeah. um, from Meehan's Pub down to the Hyatt, we, we landed in the Hyatt, and there were some kids there for some convention, and they just mobbed us. But they didn't mob her. They mobbed all the people in the cool costumes. And she's standing off to the side, and I, I stepped over, and I said, they didn't even see you, did they? And she said, no. They, and she was laughing that, you know, she could be there with all these people who are totally in her demographic, and they didn't even notice her. Well, I mean, I mean, I think that's why uh, I, I don't think it bothered her that much. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it was kind of refresh, refreshing that some guy didn't even know who the who the hell she was whenever I started talking to her. But uh, yeah. So, so now you guys are going to do this again, and that one of the things I'm I'm about to play an interview because I interviewed uh, Iron E uh, Singleton, who is on The Walking Dead. I'm going to play some of the audio, and yeah. one of one of one of the things that you know because you're in the movies and TVs and stuff like that. You've worked in worked in the industry. Um, why is it? And I've noticed this a lot. I mean, it's gr- it's beautiful scenery and stuff. Why is it that Atlanta is becoming like the eastern version of L.A.? I mean, a lot of people are doing a lot of filming in and around the state of Georgia. I mean, is it because of the tax breaks and stuff that the it's, government's it's given? The tax yeah, it's the tax incentive program, and uh, it has really been uh, incredibly effective. And um, I, I just did, uh, last week I did three days on a pilot for a J.J. Abrams show that's going to be shooting for NBC called Revolution. And the, the UPM on the show, the, the unit production manager, was saying that he feels that Atlanta has really, really, become a place to come to and that, that is really nice to live in. And that's somebody coming from the West Coast. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people from L.A. are finding that. They don't want to come. They want to work at home. They want to work in Los Angeles, which you can yeah. understand. Yeah, but it's the but, same old scenery but, and stuff you see over and over and over again, and there's so many like great scenic shots that you can film in. Right. But the tax incentives are, pow- are a powerful thing, and, and the industry is driven by money. Yep. You know, it, it's entirely driven by money, so... The great thing is, is that there are a lot of talented people who work on film crews in the southeast, and and you know, and we were always very proud of ourselves. But the thing that really brought the work here wasn't wasn't us as much as it was the tax incentives. And there's a ton of stuff shooting, a ton of stuff. Yep. No, no, there is. I, I mean, uh, I know Tyler. Doesn't Tyler Perry do a lot of his movies and stuff there in Atlanta? Because I mean, that's where he lives at and stuff. But I know a lot of the TV shows and stuff uh, are there. I know the um, a lot of the TV networks, like you know Turner and stuff, is all there in this well, in, in Atlanta. Tyler actually built his own stages out uh, near a place called Greenbrier Mall, and uh, he he took over an old facility. He actually built himself some stages. And they shoot a lot of his stuff there. They will go on location around Atlanta and shoot stuff. And he generally has at least, it seems to be, at least two productions rolling at any particular time. He's a really busy guy. And the nice thing about Tyler Perry is, despite any criticisms you'll hear about his ego, uh, uh, he was here for Atlanta when tax incentives weren't in place, and he was giving people work. So, you know, I... I think that that's a great thing about Tyler. Yeah. He has trained a lot of the new generation of people to, you know, brought them into the business. Sometimes they need to be um, taught how to work on features that aren't Tyler because he's very specific about the stuff that he does. But um, Tyler has been helpful for Atlanta. Well, very cool. Hey, so now do me a favor. If you run into Candace again, tell her I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make an ass out of myself and stuff, but uh, I thought it was kind of funny to tell that story on air and stuff. But uh, listen, do you have anything else you want to plug uh, before I let you go? Because I want to get into some of this audio uh, interview that I did with uh, Irony Singleton. Well, you know what? I'll send you some stuff on another thing that we did. But uh, I heard you talking earlier about the Strong for Life posters. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, my friend David Stewart is the guy who, who shot that stuff. He shot the stills and he shot the, the video. And uh, and he did a commercial for me for another thing that I do in September that you, you can you can talk to me again about later, but uh, it's a thing called Pirate Palooza, which is a pirate-themed pub oh, crawl. Dude. And, uh, and uh, there's a, a product that I came out with last year mm-hmm. uh, you know, as Captain Drew. It came out with the R-Plank, which is the, the pirate version of the iPad, 
and so I can send you some links for that. Oh hell yeah, man! And, I'm, there, and there's a, there's a book for it too. Well, I'm dude, I'm up for anything convention wise and stuff. And you guys put on a great one, and it was it was it was really really cool to meet you and everybody there. And uh, if there's anything I can do to you, uh, do for you, just give me a call, okay, man? Hey, I'm I'm glad you came and played with us. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good one.